So, okay, now, now this is the second session. Let's complete the function for manipulating the strings in both Python and uh, pseudocode. So what we tried just now, it is exactly this. Okay, mm -hmm. when we tested that with Sam, you remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to get P, uh, if P equal the, the first character or the second character, and then you add, you add one more. Okay, I think we tried that, and so it's clear to you. But let's have a look here. So uh, it's in pseudocode is called meet. So you pass it a string, and then you pass two, um, how to say, two integers, P and L. Okay, so if I said uh, meet here, and then I pass it, a string called a Sammy also, like that. And then I, I want to start from uh, the second and then end at the third. Okay, so what, what do you think I will get? B bear in mind, Python is different from pseudocode. Pseudocode uh, is, is inclusive and will, will, will get me yeah, uh, starting from counting from one. So here Sammy is one and A is two. Uh, yes, yeah, so tell me, tell me what, what, what we are going to get here. Um, EMI. Yes, EMI, yes, perfect. Okay, so we move to the next. Um, if you want to uh, uh, convert a character to a lower case, so you use this function uh, L case, that's in pseudocode, uh, and then if you want to convert a character, so in Python, so let's say the character here is actually A, and then once you call that lower, it will convert it to a lower case. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. then we have a look here. Okay, so for uppercase, is we call it the function here, u case, you pass it a character, it will convert it to uh, uh, an uppercase. If you pass it a lower lowercase character, uh, it will convert it to uppercase. And also the same happens here in, in uh, Python. Uh, you use uh, a ch, which is the, the character, and you convert it to upper, okay? So ch can be something like that, a, and then it will convert it we, we use that function, upper, it will convert it to uppercase. So here, uh, that's uh, that's the same. So you pass here a string um, to, to, yes, for, for pseudocode we use to upper and you, we pass it a string. So it will convert the whole string to, to uppercase. And that will happen here also um, on, uh, on, on Python. So if we have a string equal Sammy, in our case like that. So if we call dot upper on it, then it will convert it all to uppercase. If we want to, um, uh, okay, C can, you, can you imagine with me, why would you need such a functions actually when you are dealing with, um, with the strings? I, I only can imagine um, a few, a couple of uh, situations that will happen with you in the exam. If they pass you, or they ask you to uh, com to compare uh, a string that the user input to a string that is stored in the code or even stored in a file. So when you co want to compare two, two strings together, you want to make sure that when you compare them, they are either both uppercase or they are both lowercase, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you can, uh, for example, you can uh, ask the user to input uh, uh, the word secret but he, he put it in an uppercase or one, one letter is an uppercase and the, the rest is lowercase. And you want to compare it to, to one whole string that is already all lowercase, they will not be equal. They, they, they will fail every if statement that you pass to. So you have to, when you want, before you compare any two strings, you have to make sure that both of them are in the same 
uh, format. Either they are all uppercase or all lowercase, preferably make them all lower and then start comparing them if they are equal or not. This is just a, one example that you might face. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we said we convert a string uh, from lower to upper using to upper in the pseudocode. And here we use, we convert it to lower by using a two underscore lower function. So if we want to concatenate two strings in a pseudocode, we use the ampersand. But if we want to do the same in uh, Python, we use the plus sign. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We move to the next. So Joy, I, I just want to confirm with you uh, because I believe we didn't complete that uh, that slide before. Uh, yeah, we have we have uh, we have gone through this slide until the read, but uh, I don't think that we have gone to towards the end of it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to confirm with you that you are aware of the usage. Although we talk about it just now, but I suspect then when you see it in the exercise, you didn't solve it because uh, maybe we haven't gone through it before. So uh, do you know, okay, if we have a file like that and you read it and then you don't know how many entries inside the file and then you just want to loop uh, uh, through all the lines of the file, you know that we can use it this way for, you use a for loop, line in file. So whatever lines inside the file, we will go through it one by one. We will start with line zero until we reach the end of the file. Mm -hmm. So this for loop will only ends at the end of the file. So every time it read one line, it will compare. Uh, is it line that we read? Uh, dot, st dot strip means that it will remove uh, all the spaces. Uh, at the between, I mean, at the front, at, at the end of the of the string of the line that we read, okay? Uh, because if you if you have spaces at the end of the uh, of the line, and you want to make this uh, a comparison, you're checking if you are if your string that you read is equal to this, it might fail because here it does not have any spaces here or any spaces here. If you if the line that you read have spaces. This will return false. It will not be true, even though if, if it have paper docs, uh, papers doc, okay, but it have spaces in front or at the back, then it will not work. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Okay. So, so here he is searching all the file uh, line by line for this uh, string papers doc. If it is true, then the flag will be equal true. And then he will print already invited. And then um, it will, um, yeah, so it will go uh, through all the file and then it will end. And then he will um, uh, open the file again, but using um, uh, the append, append uh, sign. So it means that he opens the file uh, so that he can amend to the file. He will add something to the end of the file, okay? Uh, so that's why he used A. Uh, R is for read, A for uh, uh, amend. Okay. So if the flag is a flag equal false, it means that he didn't find that papers doc uh, uh, word inside the file. So he will write it. So he will use file to try it to be able to put that uh, string inside the file. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Okay. So now, um, do you do you know if we want to enter? Um, wait. Okay. Yeah. Do you know uh, what we would we would use if we want to uh, remove all the content of the file and rewrite all the contents again? So uh... here we use a. And then this is R. So tell me. 
how, how are you going to open the file? We, we put what here? To open the file. I mean, okay, B because the way you open the file controls what kind of operation you're able to do on the file. Is it only mm -hmm. reading? Is it uh, uh, you append something to the end of the file? Is it you rewrite the file again? So it depends on what you pass here. So if you pass W, you're actually going to rewrite all the contents of the file. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is, of course, if it's not empty. If it is empty, then okay, it's fine. You just uh, write to it. Okay. But here, if you pass A, it will only write at the end. Okay. Okay, clear. Good. We move to the next. So I want to uh, explain to you a few things. Uh, we will not go into details uh, in the queue, in explaining the queue. Uh, I know that uh, it's slightly heavy, heavy topic. And so we will take it uh, um, little by little on every time, uh, on every session until, uh, until you're able to master it uh, properly. So do you still remember how the stack works? Do you still remember the word uh, LIFO? Yeah. Okay, you still remember that the stack is like putting plates on top of each other? Yeah. Okay, you still remember that the stack uh, we draw last time, it was like that. And we said we're starting from zero and then we're having a pointer here. Can you still remember that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so now the queue works in a different way, actually. So it is uh, FIFO. FIFO means first in, first out. So the first thing that you put inside inside the queue is actually the first thing that, um, so the first thing here, you insert something here. Okay, this is, we have two pointers. Uh, let's say, okay. We have a pointer pointing to the uh, first item you insert it inside the queue. So let's say front pointer. And here is the rare pointer. Okay. So the first thing that you enter here, let's say zero, one, two. Okay. And this is the last thing that you enter inside the queue. So first in, first out means that this, if this is the first thing that you already that, that you already inserted inside the queue. If you want to remove something out of the queue, you will only remove what is inside here. Okay. And if you want to add something to the queue, you will only be adding it at the end of the queue here. So what you will do is in, when you insert something, then you will uh, make your pointer looks here. You point here. Is that clear to you? Does this make any sense? I know it's yeah. slightly different from, from previous. Do you still remember the queue from, from the AS exam? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Okay, no problem. Um, there was a slight introduction to the queue and then they provided pseudocode for working uh, with the queue on the AS level, uh, but never mind. We we take it from the start here. No no problem. Okay. So as I told you here, um, he have a front point front pointer and rear pointer, and we, we need to keep track of all these pointers. Okay. And the queue can work in two modes: linear mode and circular mode. Okay. Um, so I would say that let's have a look more. And then, okay, uh, let me 
stop here. Let me share with you something to clarify how it works. Okay. Can you see my screen? Mm, yeah. Okay. So again, this is the front pointer. He's pointing to something here, to the first uh, first uh, entrance of the of the queue, and this is towards the end. If we want to remove DQ, means uh, remove something from the queue. So we will remove uh, something. Of course, we will start to remove the first thing that we inserted, which is twenty seven. So we will have to shift the front pointer from pointing here to be pointing to the next item, like that. Mm -hmm. OK. And then the same here, if we want to uh, add something to the, to the queue, we will add at the end. So we will shift the position of the rear pointer from pointing to 79 to, to be able to point to um, 31 here, because we added something to the array, to the queue, sorry. At the end, it is an array, OK? So the stack, either the stack or the queue or, or even any other um, uh, uh, types that we are going to create is actually uh, consisting of an array and other pointers, OK? So now, mm -hmm. uh, if we want to look how the circular uh, uh, queue works, so we will be looking to this. Okay, uh, look at this situation, please. Uh, have a look here. So you see the front pointer is no longer pointing to the top. Okay, uh, it, 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 for example, it, is, it will be pointing to the end here. So th that actually is the first item because this is circular means that, okay, we reuse the parts of the array. Uh, so we ca can continue continually use it. So imagine that your front pointer is pointing to 23, which is the first thing that you inserted inside the queue. But you keep inserting and removing, inserting and removing until you reach this kind of uh, situation. OK? So when the, when the front pointer is pointing towards the end here, OK? And then uh, we say the queue length equal 4, means that we have four items inside the queue. The queue can carry 10 items from 1 to 10 here. OK, uh, but and the length is four because uh, we only have four uh, occupied uh, uh, spaces here from the queue. OK, and then you remove something, which is 23, the one that was at the end of the queue. OK, so where the front pointer is going to point, it will start again to point to the to the front here. OK. And then what if we removed or add something to the queue? So if we add something to the queue, um, we added 57 here. So it will add it at the end. It will add 57 here. Is it clear? Yeah. OK, good. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at this code. Um, and yeah, from, from there, we, we see how it works. So again, um, uh, again, we are talking about arrays. Uh, it is a 1D array. And he created a 1D array of strings um, that have 10 items inside, can have 10 items inside from 0 to 9. And we have the head pointer. Sometimes they call it front pointer. Sometimes they call it head pointers. In the exam, they might use different names. OK, uh, so we have a head and tail. OK, in the remember the stack, we only have one pointer. OK, but here we have two pointers, one on the top, one on the tail. If you want to add uh, something to the queue, you will have to increment the tail pointer. If you want to remove something from the queue, you have to uh, um, uh, increment the head pointer. Can this? Do you still remember that? If you have a mm -hmm. if you have a queue like that, so this is your 
your front point front pointer or head let's say head pointer here and you have a few items and then and that's that's uh, the tail pointer okay you want to uh, if you want to add something to the queue you have to shift that pointer down to be looking like that here if you want to remove something you have to shift that head pointer to point to the next because you're already going to remove that out. Okay, mm -hmm. so have a look. Um, same here, uh, we have been using before the global, we use it with names, with, with the head pointer and with the tail pointer, there is no issue with that. And then we have to check. We know that uh, the size of the array that we created is 10, right? So we want to check, is the tail pointer less than 10 or no? If it is bigger than 10, so it means that if we inserted this to, to the maximum, we already entered every space, every empty space in the queue. So it should be bigger than 10, okay? So it means that we cannot insert anything anymore. So you are checking the tail pointer, the tail pointer here, if it is pointing to 10, this means that you, this is the end of the queue. You cannot insert anything anymore. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, so can, can you check please? Uh, now, are we inserting something inside the queue or, or removing something from the queue? In your opinion? Adding something. Uh, w why you say like that? Because the tail pointer is plus one, equals to tail pointer plus one. Okay, that's a good sign. And also another sign, uh, please note that he passed a data as a parameter and he put it to something inside the, the array. So if he put something inside the array, it means he's adding also inside the array. Okay. Okay, so this is two signs. Uh, you are adding something that you pass here inside the array and you are also incrementing the tail pointer, which is correct. Okay, now we want to check one thing please here. Can you check, can you tell me what is that? What is he trying to do? If the pointer is pointing to negative one, it goes back to zero. Mm, but why he's doing like that? Um, so that the, the hit pointer resets so it won't mess up the flow. Um, but that will happen only on the circular uh, in the circular queue, but not not in this key, linear queue. Linear queue is slightly different. Yeah. So now imagine to me, head pointer is pointing to minus one, and you already mm -hmm. inserted something. Minus one is it means it's not pointing to here at all. It's pointing to to it, it's it's having minus one, so it's not pointing to this. So here is minus one. Okay, so. So there is no head pointer. At the moment, head pointer is pointing somewhere else. It's pointing he here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you already put, let's assume that the data have 12, have a, a value of 12. Uh, no, it's, this is a string. So let's say uh, AH. There is a string AH inside. So we put AH here because uh, we assume that the queue was empty. There is nothing inside. Head pointer was minus zero. Tail pointer was zero. So if the tail pointer was pointing to zero and we incremented to be plus one, so what would be that what would be inside the tail pointer? If it starts with by zero and you add one. One. Okay. And 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 the head pointer also need to be pointing to something because it should be pointing to the first thing that you already entered inside the array. Am I right? Now it's pointing to minus one, but he mm -hmm. add he put it here because we added something. So it need to put to, to to point to the first thing inside the queue. So that's why he put zero. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay.
Okay, so the DQ is, um, have a look here. Uh, tell me, uh, he's checking what here? Um, whether the queue is empty. So when is the queue empty? When can we say that the queue is empty? When the head pointer is still at the start, negative one. Okay, that's that's something good. Yes. Okay. That's why when he added uh, on the previous code, he, when he added something to the queue, he doesn't make it minus one, right? He added, he make it zero, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is this line doing? Um, if there is a value, uh, it prints out the item. Which is what is in the what what is in the slot that the head pointer is pointing to. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and then uh, what? Why he need to add this plus one? So that it moves on to the next slot. Okay. So again, uh, what about this? What this code is doing? Yeah. Uh, I can't see the bottom part. Okay. Uh, if the head pointer reaches the tail pointer, then the tail pointer it stays the same, but they reset the head pointer to negative one, which is the beginning, the start. Because okay. it reached it. Yeah. Okay. So, so this, this actually means that you removed everything inside the queue, that you, the queue does not have anything anymore. Uh, of course, when both of those, uh, so let's assume that it was only having, uh, let's say, AH here, and we have JO here. It was having only two items. And then you come here, you removed the first thing, okay? so. By doing so, the, the head pointer will be pointing, we will add one to it, so it will be pointing, so this is the head pointer, and this is um, uh, the tail pointer. So this will shift, because we will add one here, so this will shift to be adding to the only one item here uh, that we have, okay? Uh, that's why the, th this is one of the cases that, he will um, he will have uh, this kind of condition here, the head pointer equal the tail pointer, okay. Okay, so uh, I will stop. I will stop here, and we continue the queue on the next session. Um, let's have a look here at. So the last thing that we uh, we studied last session uh, was actually uh, created objects from classes. Can you still remember that, right? Yeah. Are you still facing difficulty in that? Uh, Slightly? Yeah. Okay. So in the exam, actually, you will see uh, something like that. So we will put for you... Um, whatever uh, data variables or attributes uh, in this form, okay? And he will put for you the methods that you need to create inside the class in this way. So, he, so okay, uh, now we have stop and we have to uh, open another session.